Okay, so in today's video, what we're going to be doing is uh, we're going to be putting together a piston and rod combo. Now, I don't have all the con rods laid out, I've just got the one, but I've got all four pistons out. And uh, these have all been balanced. Okay, The easiest way to know if your con rod has been balanced when you, after taking it to your engine balancer, is you'll see a little bit of material that's been shaved away. And up here, it's been a little bit of material shaved away. And that's called end-to-end -end balancing. That is making sure that the, the con rod is balanced the way it's supposed to be for wherever its fulcrum point is, okay? Um, so that's been balanced there. The pistons get balanced as well. They get a, a slight change to their weight based on on whichever. And the ideal goal is is that everything is interchangeable. So the set that goes into number four could technically go into number three and vice versa. Hence, why these are no longer uh, ha no longer have number weights stamped into them. And um, these pistons don't have a number, like a number four or a number three. If you get your, your pistons and everything back from a balancer and they've got one, two, three, four labeled across them, then that's the position in the engine that they have to go. Okay? Very important to note. And in those circumstances, very important to know the exact weight of the combination going into that particular spot. Otherwise, you'll have to rebalance the whole crank all over again if something happens. So, the primary components that we're going to be looking at today, we've got our con rod. We've got some uh, extreme pressure anti-scoring lubricant. We've got our wrist pin. Might also be known as a uh, piston pin. Okay. We have two of these little spring clips here and Wiseco has a technical name for them but I don't have it with me Spiro locks Spiro locks, something like that, something to that extent Okay, so uh, a lot of this is going to be dedicated technically to the, this combination, so it's not going to apply to everybody. Um, the Wiseco piston has uh, a little dot here, okay, and that denotes that it goes to the front of the engine, okay. The con rod has no mechanism for denoting which orientation it goes. However, um, we're going to put it in this way with the bearing grooves towards the exhaust side of the engine. So if you're looking at the con rod this way, you've got, uh, and you're looking from the front of the engine, that's the exhaust side, that's the intake side, and the exhaust side is where I'm going to be putting these uh, retainer grooves. All right. So, Oh, very uh, important to note, you guys have probably seen me wear gloves this time. And there's two reasons for that. One, this stuff stains. Uh, and two, we're working on sensitive engine materials that um, take a lot of heat and abuse. And I want to make sure that the oil from my fingers isn't damaging them. Recommendations for gloves are whatever your skin isn't uh, opposed to. So whether it's rubber, latex, or nitrile. Um, some people are allergic to latex, so just something to keep in mind when you go buy gloves. And make sure that they are powder free. You don't want powder gloves because you don't want any of that powder from the inside of the glove that protects your skin from getting into your bearing components, okay? So we'll just start with that. Now, um, first step in the assembly process is knowing the orientation of your piston. So we're going that's front. So we're going to set that up like that, and we're going to put that like there. So we know that this is front, and the connecting rod is going exhaust side. So we mirror it, 
and we know that the K1 logo shines up front. Okay, so K1 logo goes up front. Now, before we get too dedicated in putting everything together, we're going to do a step that a lot of people might miss. That is critical to making sure that you have the best um, reliability out of your engine possible. Now, for installation of the when this gets bolted to the conro uh, to the crankshaft, uh, I'm going to be using the bolt stretch method. Okay, and that is measuring how much the bolt um, deflects. I guess you could say. So. Before we get started, we need to make a table in our workbook. Okay, so I went ahead and made my little chart here. Save you guys from having to watch that. Um, now, made a little note that number side equals inside. So the con rod has numbers on it 0104, 0104. That's end cap matching, okay? Um, so I wrote number one, in, out number side equals inside so I know that this is the inside okay alright so uh, a little bit of a disruption here went to go get something to eat um, and while I was done doing that got the uh, the end cap off so it's very important that I remember which bolt went in where so we only remove one at a time All right, so there we go. There's the single bolt. And put it right there for right now. And then we're going to clean our vernier caliper to make sure that everything is nice and clean. So we want the most accurate readings possible. Okay. So, we're at a zero, and then we measure end to end. We are at 49.49 .49 millimeters. Now, I took this bolt out of the side that had the letters on it, so we know that that's the inside. And we go 49.49. .49. Pretty straightforward, eh? And then we take the outside bolt out. And we measure it. And we get 49.45. All right. See this stuff, it's already gunking up my gloves. Now that we've got that written down, we can continue. with installing the con rod to the piston. Alright, so first things first, we need to make sure that the wrist pin is well lubricated. Okay, so I get some of my blueberry jam here. This stuff kind of dyes everything too, so... Luckily not fingers. Now we're installing this into the piston, and there's these little um, angled grooves here, okay, and right along the edge. See, it's not perfectly square at the end, and that's just to help guide the pin in. So, you want to make sure that those are well lubricated as well. And you don't want the wrist pin too wet. Okay, so if there's excess on your fingers or whatever, just wipe it off, get rid of it. Okay. We've got our piston here. We confirm dot facing towards the front of the engine. We already discussed this. The uh, K1 
Okay, one logo is going to the front of the engine. And there we have it. Okay. So right now it's resting. Conrad's resting on the um, wrist pin. I'm gonna take away the excess lubricant. Right. And then we have our little snap rings that we previously discussed. And to be perfectly honest, these things are kind of a pain in the ass to install. See, there's a special tool if you have the uh, spiral locks. special tool you can get. Uh, unfortunately, these don't have that tool and just require that you be a little bit of a bear. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and install this because I think fidgeting with this is going to take a bit. Okay, so you guys can kind of sort of see that that spiral lock is, or um, spring lock, whatever you want to call them. It's partially in there. The bottom two, or the uh, the split, it, I put down in the bottom, and you press in through the top. You hear a click, and then it's in. Then we rotate it around the other side. And uh, then we put the other one in. And there we go. They're in. So, a little bit of work, but then it's in. Now your uh, rod and piston assembly is complete, aside from the, the rings. This stuff here, by the way, is used when you're torquing these back together. Okay. And uh, depending on your, your assembly lubricant, you want to limit how much you, you move this around. So, that's a uh, reasonably quick look at how you go about installing the um, uh, pistons and con rods to the to each other. You mate them. Um, make sure that you record your bolt lengths because uh, a change in bolt length can be the difference between you know a six dollar bolt or in my case a six thousand dollar engine. Um, so that's something that you definitely want to be keeping track of, that you want to be um, through the process when you're torquing everything down, you're making sure that everything's done correctly. And these, like I said, are going to be done with a bolt stretch gauge, and I'm still not sure yet if I'm going to be doing a video on that.